Hello! How are you? This is Edith Neumeyer and I'm the author of the book The Mystery of Adam. I did make a video um, uh, on Bichute that I didn't think I could put um, on um, uh, on my YouTube channel. It's about Fauci. And um, so anyways, go to Bitchute and watch my video. I may put the link on the bottom. Um, that will be okay. But you need to watch it. Um, you'll probably like it quite a lot. But anyways, today I want to make a video about the Feast of Trumpets again. Hmm, the last one I'm hoping for this year. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Well, anyways, I just found a video and uh, I just wanted to share it. I do not agree with the person on his end times theology. Okay, he believes in the rapture, okay, which I do, but he is very stuck in dispensationalism, which I think is a false doctrine. Some of the things in there are okay. Okay, like, yes, I believe in the rapture. I believe in Jesus coming for his bride. Okay? And he is not coming at the end of the wrath of God, but in the beginning. Okay? And there is no tribulation after the rapture either. The tribulation is during the time of the Gentiles. The whole time of the Gentiles is absolutely, I need to wait right here, is um, tribulation. That's what I believe, okay? If you don't believe that, okay, fine. But this is what the Bible teaches. This is what the Bible teaches. There's yes. nothing you can do about that. I have done extensive studies, not somebody's commentary or somebody's theology. No, it's my own theology. Well, it shouldn't be it's my own theology. It's what the Bible says, okay? And the Bible says clearly, that there is going to be tribulation, and you can find that, of course, in Matthew, after the tribulation of those days. Okay? What days is he talking about? He is talking about the days of the Gentiles, which we can find in Luke 21. Okay? That's the same time period. The tribulation in the time of the Gentiles is the same time period. Okay? So, the whole time of the Gentiles is tribulation. All saints go through tribulation. And then Jesus will return and pick up his bride. Now, why do we have the word rapture? That word rapture did not come into existence uh, until I don't know when. It has not been in existence very long. Why? Because during the time of the uh, like uh, King James translations, or even further back, this word was not you. It was not used for the snatching out of the bride. It was used for something else. You can do the research, and I believe it may have been used rapture for rape. Okay, so it was not used, and so King James did not use it, and the other translators didn't use it either. But the German translators use that word rapture, okay? In German, it's called Entrückung, okay? So it's there. It's not something that somebody made up. It's just a new word. We have so many new words, right, in the English language. There's a constant change. And just today, that word means to snatch out, okay? be caught up, to be caught up, snatched out, that is that word rapture. So I don't want to hear anything about, oh, rapture doesn't exist. Yeah, rapture does exist. Because First Thessalonians 4 tells you it does exist. It's caught up, okay? So that is the event that I'm talking about. When Jesus comes for his bride, that's right at the beginning of the day of the Lord, okay? And... The Feast of Trumpets also starts exactly that day of the Lord, okay? And I hope you understand that, 
That's what starts the day of the Lord. And then during the day of the Lord, many trumpets will be blown. The first set of trumpets that will be blown are for the rapture. It's for Jesus picking up his bride. And then after that, there's going to be seven trumpets for God's wrath. Okay? So understand that too. There are trumpets for different occasions. So don't mix them up. So Jesus comes in before the wrath of God. And he will blow a hundred trumpets because that's part of the Feast of Trumpets. Okay? So you need to understand it. And I'm going to talk about that today. But what is this uh, video that I saw? I just saw a video. Okay? That again will let us know that maybe this Feast of Trumpets that the Jews celebrated when at the beginning of this month may have not been the real first, I mean, true Feast of Trumpets and that we may have to wait until October 8th or 7th, okay? So this is, uh, I just needed to make another video because I have found very good evidence that yes, this fake Feast of Trumpets that the Jews celebrated in September is not the correct one. Okay? And so that means we would have time for Jesus in October. Okay? So Jesus would come in October. Okay? So we have still a couple of weeks. Because why? Because the Feast of Trumpets is the time, the appointed time that God has put in place for the return of Jesus. If you don't know about the Feast of Trumpets, it has nothing to do with the Jewish holidays and the Jewish traditions and how the Jews celebrate the holidays. It has nothing to do with it. it. has nothing to do with celebrating the holidays or the feasts. It has only to do with the appointed time of God. God appointed feasts for Messiah or times to fulfill for Messiah to fulfill. And Messiah fulfilled the first four of the feasts. Now we have three more in the fall and he will fulfill those exactly on the days as well. The one he is going to fulfill next is the Feast of Trumpets. And since the time is really getting close to Jesus' return. We can expect Jesus every year on the Feast of Trumpets. And if you're truly his bride, you should be prepared for that uh, event to happen. You should be the bride, okay? should be ready. You shouldn't be one of the foolish virgins. You know about the foolish virgins, right? Now, Matthew 25, do you know about it? You know that the foolish virgins were waiting for the bridegroom? Do you understand the Jewish or the Hebrew wedding ceremony? Oh, people now are going to be screaming and saying, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we don't celebrate Jewish uh, feasts or holidays or whatever. But you need to understand that the wedding is the same as the Hebrew wedding. So we have to understand, we cannot just throw out the Old Testament and say, well, we're just going to ignore everything. No, Jesus got married to his bride under the Jewish law. Okay? Under the Jewish law. The contract was made under the Jewish law. So that's why the Hebrew wedding. We're not looking at a Western world, worldly wedding. That's what we do, the, the, the Gentiles do. No, Jesus goes by Hebrew wedding. He is a Jew, okay? He is a Hebrew. So he goes by those traditional wedding ceremony. Now, do you know how the traditional Jewish wedding goes? Do you know it? In other words, first, 
the, the bridegroom comes to the bride and tells her that she wants to get, they, she, he wants to get married to her. So they sit down with a glass of wine and uh, work out the contract. Okay? The deal. They're not as stupid as some of, uh, most of these, uh, uh, um, Gentile, uh, um, couples that have no idea what they get into. No. In a Jewish wedding, they know what they're getting into or Hebrew wedding. So they'd make a deal. They make the deal. The, they make the marriage vows right there. Okay. If both of them agree, they drink the cup. Remember the last supper? That is exactly what happens. That's why we're celebrating the Last Supper, people. Okay? Because every time we celebrate it, we remember our contract with the bridegroom. Every time we drink, it's not only his blood that's symbolizing it, but it's also the cup of our marriage contract. So what does the bridegroom do? He goes, prepares a place for the bride. That can last one to two years. Then he comes back and gets the bride. He gets the bride. Not He's not sending out his, his servants to get the bride. No, he gets the bride himself. Come on, really. Okay? Now, of course, the father tells him, Hey, the rooms are ready. You can get your bride. That's where we get this, Nobody knows the day nor the hour, only the father. Because only the father tells the bridegroom, It is time. So he goes in the middle of the night like a thief in the night, people. He comes like a thief in the night, but not to his bride. Why? Because the bride is always ready. You understand? The bride is listening. She hears the trumpets. He comes like a thief to everybody else. He comes with his friends and they're carrying him on this chair, on this chair that, that they're carrying, and he picks up his bride, people. Okay, so don't forget that that's going to happen. He's going to have to go into the hoopah first. If you forget that, you're going to mess up the whole timetable. A lot of people just totally ignore it. Okay, they don't understand. They want to be a, a Messianic Jews or Hebrew roots people, and they don't even have any idea about a, a, a Hebrew wedding. Oh, shame on you, really. Shame on you if you don't even know that because that is so important to know that you know what our procedure is, the wedding with the bridegroom. How can you say you are a bride if you don't even know in what kind of a relationship you are with the bridegroom? So the bridegroom goes, prepares the, 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 the rooms, and the bride, meanwhile, has no intercourse with the bridegroom. We know that for Mary and Joseph. Okay? Not until the bridegroom comes back and is finished with the rooms or the, the, the house. And they go into the hoopah. That is when they have intercourse for the first time. And that's when uh, the, bride, uh, the bridegroom has to show and the bride that she was a virgin. Yes, read up on that. Read up on the Hebrew marriage procedures. That's how it goes. So don't overjump um, that important event. Many people just overjump that event and say, Oh no, Jesus is coming uh, at the end for everybody to see and, uh, and, and then he's going to bring the bride up. Well, when are they going into the hoopah? And then they're going to celebrate there too? No, people. It's not the way it happens. He picks up the bride in the middle of the night. There's going to be five that are foolish. They don't understand that they have a contract with Jesus. Okay? They don't, they don't know. Maybe they're just doing all kinds of other things in this world, right? They're not really prepared for the bridegroom's return or whatever. Whatever reason why they are foolish and they stand before the door... Uh, um, after the bridegroom came and Jesus says, well, I don't know you. Why does Jesus not know them? They acted like they had the, the, the lamp. Did they actually even get uh, oil? We don't know. And they may never found some oil. But 
They're standing in front of the door. They're foolish. So where's the bride? Where's the bride, people? It is a parable, yes, but it is so close to reality. It's like unbelievable why people cannot see it. It's so unbelievable. Okay, so the the door is closed to what? Where does he take them? What is Jesus preparing? He's preparing the new Jerusalem. He's preparing the rooms for the bride. They're in there, and the door is closed. So now, what happens? What happens next? Is that the end? Is he now establishing his his, his a, a kingdom? No, people. Now the wrath of God starts. Okay, while the bride and the bridegroom is in the hoopah. Now, a lot of people say, "Well, but isn't he causing the wrath of God?" Yeah, he has caused the wrath of God long time ago at the beginning of the world. All the catastrophic events that are going to ha happen during the wrath of God, and you can read them. Okay, I talked about them even in my videos prior. They're going to happen right then, and they're all catastrophic events. Okay, God is not need. Well, God has orchestrated them, but He is not there and doing it. Okay, the whole system is going to be destroyed because of catastrophic events. Read them, read them, people. Read the the seven trumpets. Read the seven bowls of God's wrath. It tells you the wrath of God that is coming. While Jesus in is in the hoopah with the um with the bride. And then there's going to be Armageddon. Is Jesus really needed? Is he really going to battle in Armageddon, or is he orchestrating everything else that they kill each other? Okay. Is he orchestrating everything so they will kill each other on that battlefield? They will already have. I mean, the powers have already been set in motion right now. The kings of the east are coming, and the kings of the west, which is the new world order, is going against the kings of the east. Okay, and you know the kings of the west, which is the new world order, is part of Israel, and also the Arab nations there. Okay, they will all fight together because they have to. Okay. Well, of course, the ones that are not fighting are on the side of the Chinese, the kings of the east. Okay, those are going to be the kings of the east that will come and overrun the Middle East, and the New World Order will be there. Whoever is left over. Okay, the New World Order. You know who the New World Order? The beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth. That's the New World Order. And they're already in place. They are the political system that we have today, the NATO. And the NATO will fight against the the king of the east. Now I'm already getting off my subject, but I wanted to tell you what's happening. Now Jesus does he need to be here? No, he doesn't really need to be here. Okay, there's going to be a long time. Before that battle, like I would think,、um, maybe two years,、uh, two or three years, okay. And during that time, they're in the hupa, and maybe he's gonna have to leave the last half a year or whatever, yeah, and 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 kind of orchestrate things. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but it's in. It's not. Impossible that that's the way it's going to go. He doesn't need to be here the whole time when the wrath of God is is going on. He's going to be up there with his bride in the chambers, in the marriage chambers, and we are having a great time. People, if you cannot long for your bridegroom and long for this time when you, for the first time, see your bridegroom, oh my goodness, can you imagine? Do you can you imagine how much we have to、uh, share with each other? How we have to hug each other?、Uh, do we just long to be close to each other? Can you imagine that our first intimate moments? Intimate moments, okay? Unbelievable! It will be a glorious time, and if you do not long, long. For that time, 
You are not bride. You're not bride. You will be standing in front of the door and, and Jesus will say, I don't know you. Why? Because you did not have this intimate, uh, uh, really intimate relationship with him before. If you're not longing, longing for his return, I'm longing for him to return in October. I don't want to wait another year so I have to endure this horrible, horrible earthly system. Yeah, we had it nice. I also enjoyed this world. But you can't enjoy the world anymore. We are told that pretty soon we cannot even fly anymore. I cannot fly right now with having to wear a, a mask and maybe do the, the testing and all that stuff. I can't do that. I cannot bow to the system for nonsense, things that are not necessary. I'd rather just stay away from the system. I do not want to be out there and even deal with the nonsense they, 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 they'd have to deal with out there. It's nonsense. It's craziness, people. It's so crazy. So many lies. I don't want to endure another year in this world. I don't. Okay, it'll give me maybe in another year to witness and hopefully people, we can re reach people. But do you know what? The time to reach people is coming to an end as well. It's, it becomes so obvious today who is making a decision for Jesus really making a decision for Jesus and who is making a decision for this world. It's becoming very obvious. Everybody who takes this, I really believe, is making a decision for the world. Okay? And, and I'm not angry. I'm not judging people. People can make that decision. But that's what they're doing. We are today in a time where we meet, need to make a decision for Jesus. Okay? And we need to long for him to come. And if we don't have that strong longing and, and, and hope, we're hoping that he will, be, uh, he will come in October or by October. Um, no, don't want to be here anymore. I do not want to be here anymore. I just don't want to be here anymore. And I know that Paul said the same thing. Yeah, to live means Christ to death, I mean, to die means gain. That's what Paul said. And he is right. To live means Christ, to die means gain. And that's the way it is. That's the way strongly how I feel right now as well. Yeah, no, uh-uh. I'd rather die than live in this world system, in this liar system. Please watch my previous video on Bitchute. Oh my goodness. I am so fed up. I'm so fed up with this system. I'm so fed up with the lies. Uh, and, and again, people are making their decisions. And it's very horrible to see how many people make the decision for this world. Even when you look in the churches and see how many people get, got this right here, you see how many true believers or potential true believers are left over. Not very many. Not very many. So I would rather have Jesus coming. And I'm so glad, um, you know, for this video that showed, did I even say that? This video that I watched, Feast of Trumpets Reset, October 7th and, uh, 7th and 8th, True Revelation 12 Sign Alignment, Wake Up Again. Well... That says us that, that um, the Feast of Trumpets this year did not start on the correct day. The barley harvest was not, I mean, uh, the, the barley was not ripe on Passover. He said it in that video. I don't agree with everything he's saying, but that part was really good. I hope I said it. I don't know if I did. I think I started out. But yeah, he said it, the barley harvest was not totally ripe, or the barley has to ripe. Most of the barley needs to be ripe before they can harvest it. And then he also says something interesting, that Revelation 12 sign. 
and i don't know of course in a couple of years ago they said the revelation 12 sign was um, a sign for the church it's not a, t a sign for the church the revelation 12 sign is the ch uh, the sign uh, in a revelation 12 for jesus um for jesus birth okay that's what it is now could it be a sign for maybe uh, uh, the rapture Yes, they're saying that every year during the Feast of Trumpet, um, the uh, what happens is the sun and the moon are in, in uh, Virgo, okay? And this year, during the Feast of Trumpets, the sun and the moon was not in Virgo. It was still in Leo. In, in Leo, Lion? Leo. <laughs> it's Leo. Okay, in Leo. So maybe that's a sign too. But for me, the barley is enough. The barley is totally enough. If the barley was not ripe or ripe for harvest, then no, they should have waited another month. And I know the shoes didn't do that. So that's why I think we have another couple of weeks until October 7th or 8th until the real Feast of Trumpets. Well, I almost forgot to say that, didn't I? But yeah, that's why I'm so excited. I'm very excited that we hopefully have a, another chance this year and we don't have to wait another whole year, which would be just devastating, very devastating. Oh my goodness, it would be so terrible. Coming to an end, let the Holy Spirit guide you always.